Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. Okay guys, it's going to be another fun painting today, so grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now those of you that want to uh, pause the video and draw what you see on screen, go ahead and do that with those first stages. And then those of you that just use the traceable, you can jump right into painting your background. And you do have full permission to change colors. So right now I'm demonstrating a few different brush strokes to try and we are using a light blue and that is white with a little touch of blue and we're basically going to fill in the entire canvas area um, surrounding the seahorse. Now if you have to mix your color two or three times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade of blue each time. A little variety will be to your benefit and then we're also going to add some other colors after we fill in the space and do a little bit of wet on wet blending. So basically just kind of have fun, embrace your, um, your inner child, your inner five-year-old, and just enjoy the process of painting. Now if you need to, I'm using the large flat brush, but if you need to, you can move down to a smaller uh, middle-sized brush or that small pointy brush as you come up closer to your seahorse to get into some of those little uh, nooks and crannies around the seahorse. And if you happen to paint over the tail or the nose or uh, that back fin, don't worry about it. We, um, acrylic paint is awesome that we can layer our colors on top of each other, layer our paint. So now we're actually going to grab some of that direct blue and you can see where I'm slapping it on the bottom and in a few places on the canvas. And then with light pressure, I'm just going on top of that with the brush and blending that into the base paint. And this is called wet on wet blending. You will notice that the more that you move your brush, the more the two colors blend together. So if you need to reapply the blue, because uh, you want that to be a little bit stronger, reapply it and then just don't move your brush as much. If you happen to be on a stretched canvas today, I do recommend that you carry this background color around the sides of the canvas, tops and bottom, um, just so it looks nice when you hang it on the wall. So now we're doing that same thing, that wet on wet blending with white paint, kind of towards the top of the canvas. And if you want to kind of get a little more creative, throw some teal in there, throw some purple. Um, you can switch out any colors that you want. So there was a point there to pause your video, take your progress photo. You do not have to paint as fast as I'm doing this uh, time-lapsed video, but we're going to make orange and that is going to be yellow with a tiny amount of red. And we're literally just going to put the first layer on here because I'm using student grade paint. Um, it is a bit on the transparent side. So to compensate for the transparency, we'll put two layers of paint on here. And this just happens to be the first one. Again, if you want a different colored seahorse, if you want a purple or an orange or whatever, uh, feel free to switch out your colors. And on this one, I did move down to the medium flat brush. Uh, you can also jump down to that small pointy brush as you get into the tail. All right, you're doing a great job. If you have been holding your breath, take a big inhale, relax. You're doing awesome. All right, so here we're grabbing a little bit of that yellow and then we're going to add a bit more red and go just a little bit darker on the back side, uh, the left hand side of the seahorse. Again, this is just the first layer. When we do this a second time, the seahorse will actually be more orange and we'll do some similar shading. So just kind of getting you comfortable with that wet on wet uh, method, playing with the pressure of your brush. Each time that you paint, you get more comfortable with the process. And what you learn in this painting, you will take into your next painting. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, fully let this dry before you do your second layer of orange. And same as the first, you're gonna start with yellow and add a tiny amount of red, and you can get to the color orange that you want. Um, I will be going a little bit darker uh, than I did on the first layer. But again, adjust for what you want your seahorse to be. <clears throat> So again, just kind of putting that second layer on there, you can already see how much more opaque it is, how much nicer. And we're going to put that base layer, and then we'll be doing some wet on wet blending. Again, if you find that you are your brush is shaky, 
or you're holding your breath, just exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas and enjoy the process. Again, if you need to switch down to the small pointy brush as you get into smaller spaces, go for it. Use any of my videos on my channel just as kind of a, a guide, a base, but full permission to deviate and make it your own. And I love it when my students um, add their own personal touches to the paintings that they do. That just makes them more unique for you. All right, so now we're going to grab that yellow and we're going to put some highlights on the right hand side. And you can see that I'm just grabbing that yellow, kind of generous because the lighter colors will kind of diffuse and mix in with that base. And I just want you to observe where I place each of these colors and the general kind of shape that I make when I place them. Here, using that direct red, we're going to put it in these specific areas. Then I'm going to wipe the brush off, wipe off that excess paint, and then go back with light pressure and just kind of push, kind of blend that red into the base orange. Again, the more that you do this, the more comfortable you'll get with your mixing and your blending. And your brain's taking in a lot of information now, especially if you're one of my first time or beginner painters. Your brain is um, getting comfortable with the pressure of the brush, with what it looks like when you add red to the orange or when you add yellow to the orange. So again, be kind to yourself as you go through your own creative process. I'm really proud of you. All right, so this little seahorse is coming along nicely. So pause the video, take your progress photo. Again, we're going to let this fully dry and then we're going to make a light green. So start with the yellow and I'm using the small pointy brush, tiny amount of blue. Um, we'll go a long way to make your green. And if yours is a little darker or lighter than mine, uh, totally OK. I did do this painting with primary colors. Uh, blue, red, and yellow. If you happen to have a tube of green and you want to use that for your uh, seaweed, totally go ahead and do that. So as you're working with this one, just kind of play with maybe a little bit more pressure on the brush so you can see the wider line it makes. And then to that green, you're going to add a little bit more blue to go a little darker and um, just kind of giving these seaweed a little bit of depth. We'll do the same thing with a little bit of yellow on here to give it a bit of a highlight. Don't overthink too much, um, and I do recommend that you look at your painting from a distance of 5 to 10 feet away and assess it from there compared to 2 feet in front of your face while you are painting it. So cleaning that brush, grabbing the yellow, we're going to put a few highlights on the seaweed, and then we'll be moving into the outlines of the seahorse. Guys are doing great. And I do recommend that you find a creative outlet on a regular basis for yourself. Paint with your friends, paint with your family. Um, this is just a good method to get some relaxation and stress relieving activities in your world. All right, so we are using that small pointy brush. I did add a touch of water to it to kind of um, give my pigment a little bit more fluidity. If you already kind of have runny paint, you don't have to add any water to it. Just use your paint direct. Again, using that small pointy brush, we're going to be outlining, kind of replicating that traceable. So I want you to play with the pressure. Light pressure will create some skinnier lines. A little more pressure will create a bit wider lines. And just kind of play with what's comfortable for you. Here you can see that I do put my pinky out and I kind of use that as my steady pivot point as I'm making these lines. You can also rest your forearm against the edge of the table. If you need to turn the canvas sideways or upside down or put it in your lap, whatever you need to do um, to be able to make some of these marks. And again, the more that you make uh, lines like this, the more you'll understand your brush pressure and your muscles will get a little bit more comfortable with the process. So again, be kind to yourself at no matter what stage you are in your creative exploration. And feel free if you would rather do a different design. Um, I've taught this painting many, many times, and some people put some tribal designs in there. I think somebody's written their name on the inside of their seahorse, but feel free to get creative. And you can even add other colors, little dots, little dash marks, little symbols in there. But again, this is your painting to do what you want with it. I'm just proud of you for painting and pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. That's a big part of art. Um, we get too comfortable and then we don't try new things. And I think when we try new things, that kind of keeps our brain uh, fresh and keeps it young. So constantly challenge yourself because you will impress yourself with what you do and hopefully find some new hobbies. All right.
right, so just moving in that last little bit on the tail. Um, and then oh, he's get he gets a little eyeball as well. And then since we painted over that back fin, we will switch back and we'll actually use some yellow and uh, I think a little bit of red and then do a little a uh, few little outlines on there. But if you want to give your seahorse a bit more of like some of the dragon qualities of those little spiny seahorses that are really cute, uh, go right ahead. Make your seahorse as unique as you want. And if you are finding that your brush is shaky, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas and that will help with some of the shakiness. The shakiness comes from holding your breath and the muscles getting kind of tight. All right, this guy's looking really good. We're gonna move into some yellow for that back fin and maybe a few little highlights. There we go. And these are just kind of, um, kind of flary little dash marks, kind of put the top and the bottom perimeter and then we'll just kind of um, do a flick of the wrist for the rest of that fin. And because it is transparent paint, I do want you to apply this yellow a little bit thicker so it'll compensate for the blue that's underneath. When it's kind of transparent, it makes it look like it's a bit green where yellow and blue mix. So apply the thickness of paint as needed based on what you have. All right, so we put the yellow in there. If you do want to put some red, uh, go right ahead. I'm moving apparently straight into the black and just going to add a few more of the outlines. There we go. Define it a little bit. And this is nice because it gives it some pretty high contrast with the yellow uh, that we put on there a moment ago. All right, so now moving into white, we're going to do some highlights. Again, trust your instincts. If you are inclined to put the highlights somewhere, I do not. Um, I just did the catch light on the eye, which is just a little dot. Feel free to pause the video and just observe the place and the general kind of mark making the lines um, that I made for this. But again, trust your instincts. If you're inclined to do something I don't, go for it on yours. And if you don't like it, let it dry and you can just paint right on top of it again. Acrylic paint's a wonderful medium just to get creative and go, what's this going to do? What's this going to do? And the more that you kind of experiment that way, the more you're building that knowledge in your brain and it gets you more comfortable with your own creative process. There's no perfect way to paint. The only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. All right, so last few little highlights. Like I said, if you want to add other colors or designs in there, go right ahead, personalize it to your liking, and then send me photos of what you guys create. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day and getting creative. Have a good one, and until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can. And any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.